Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, April 23rd, around noontime, Mountain Time 2022. Now, I'm recovering from some teeth being pulled yesterday morning, so bear with me. It is painful, but not as painful as the blizzard in the upper Midwest here or the plains, South Dakota, North Dakota. Montana and Wyoming all affected. And that's the big story. Gillette under level two snow emergency. Holy macaroni. It's almost May. Keep calm. It's boom time. This U.S. town just picked up four feet of snow in less than a week. Shut up, pal! Two blockbuster April snowstorms struck one community in just a few days, and more is headed that way. Nestled between the United States-Canada border and North Dakota, the capital of Bismarck. In the city of Minot, North Dakota, is home to approximately 48,000 people. This past week, folks in Minot, or Minot, experienced weather that may have felt more typical of January. An astonishing four feet of snow fell there. Obviously a record. <laughs> now, let's talk about some more records. Sierra snow totals after Thursday's storm were, well, pretty significant, as well as the rain up to 2.26 inches in Comanche, it looks like 1.9 inches in Placerville and many of the dry areas got a little moisture. And then there's, well, the snow, which they're not showing us here. <laughs> there we go. Alpine Meadows saw 23 inches. Palisades saw 28 inches. Heavenly 18 in Kirkwood. And we'll get to some more of these ridiculous spring snow totals in just a moment. Now, here are the nine biggest snowfall totals, according to Snow Brains, in North America. But they left out Pagosa Springs in Wolf Creek. We had 390 inches this year, and that's going to uh, bring it pretty high. Now, the number one is right here where this dude is, and we shared this with you last week. Uh, Alyeska report in Alaska. Alyeska in Alaska, 792 inches. Number two, Mount Baker in Washington, 640 for the season. Number three, Timberland, Oregon, 522 for the season. Brighton, Utah had 432 for the season. Whistler, 418. Alta, 408. Palisades, 394. Wolf Creek Pass, Wolf Creek Ski Area, 390. Stevens Pass, 368. And Mammoth Mountain, 337. So there you have it. Lots of snow. This is about an average year. These are an average numbers for solid average year for snow in these areas. And that's good news because we were told there would be no more snow. Isn't that true, Al? Now, where were the highest winds? If you went out yesterday, you knew it was windy. Most of the country was windy somewhere, especially west of the divide. And strong winds are again expected across Colorado. And Colorado saw some big gusts, 70 miles in Akron, 74 miles an hour in Buckley, 72 mile hour gusts in Buena Vista, Burlington with 74 mile per hour gusts. And just a windy day here. Hotchkiss. Getting hotch with its kiss at 72 miles per hour. Now, spring storm shatters a 42 year old rainfall record as well in the Sonora Desert. So there is some moisture falling. And now we have the monsoon season to look forward to. And maybe, just maybe, the monsoon this year will crush the drought but the 42 year old record that was broken in sonora du was double the last record sonora received 0.87 inches of rain thursday more than double the previous record of 0.42 inches set back in 1980 so good news in the desert bad news up in the plains record-breaking snowfall briefly interrupts spring in montreal and another day of record-breaking spring snow in calgary holy macaroni what's going on al well, I'll tell you what's going on. Snow is falling in the west. Yes, west of the Rockies, there has been snow in all of the states in the northwest, even some snow in northern Azarona. That's good news. But the bad news is there's blizzard conditions in five states. And we're talking eastern Montana, eastern Wyoming, western North Dakota, and what northwestern South Dakota, all with blizzard warnings. And that is dozens of counties. So click on your county for more information on what the deal is there. The blue and the pink areas are winter storm watches and warnings, heavy winds, all the way down through Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. So it's quite an active day for weather and the rest of the weekend. And there is that blizzard right now. It's a current position. It's going to sit there for a little bit and slowly move east. That was just 18 hours. Holy macaroni. That's going to be a heavy snow producer. And then it's going to whisk its way back up into Canada. And off to the races. Now let's take a look at those totals. Here is our Saturday afternoon through Sunday evening. It's looking like by Sunday night, you could have 24 inches in some of these areas, especially in North Dakota. And that could be as high as four feet up on the 
state line, uh, the, the line between Canada and North Dakota there. And that's where they already picked up four feet of snow over the last week. They may be getting another four feet of snow from this system. And this brings us all the way out to the end of the next week where we're going to have a little bit of snow coming into the northwest and a little bit of snow lingering in the northeast. And that's your snowfall forecast. Seismic update. 4.8 just kicked off in western China, but the good news is there are no quakes of note. This one could have been probably deadly. 5.7 in Bosnia, I haven't looked into it, but this was a surface quake in Bosnia, and they just don't build them like they used to back in Bosnia. So, first go out to anyone injured in that minor quake in Bosnia. Something else we want to be looking to just kicked off about six hours ago, another seismic swarm beginning in the Reykjanes Peninsula. And this has been ongoing now for months, and we've been predicting a large quake here, or a large eruption. A large eruption on the peninsula, not from the Kreischewick uh, vents that went off about six months ago, but we're looking for something closer towards the tip of the Reykjanes Peninsula. And the seismicity is ongoing right now as I bloviate. Now, Edgecombe Volcano, we did a special on magnetic reversal news on the uptick here, and the mainstream is just picking it up a week later. That's pretty impressive. Now, the swarm of earthquakes detected in the vicinity of Mount Edgecombe beginning Monday, April 11th, is now being reported on as significant. Swarm of earthquakes was detected in the vicinity of Mount Edgecombe, and that was two weeks ago. There were hundreds of small quakes in the swarm, though the large majority were too small to locate. And over the past few days, it's returned back to background levels. Now, the bad news is the uplift in this region is quite impressive. And we're going to just bring up this map here. Take a look right near the Mount, Mount Edgecombe here. And this is location number four, number three, number two, number one, corresponding to these graphs. There has been a massive amount of uplift since 2018. And it's not changing. So there is definitely huge amounts of magma under Mount Edgecombe waiting to come to the surface. And when it does, well, we'll report on it. Like Just like we're reporting on Krakatoa Baby or of Krakatoa is now blowing. Uh, we started reporting on 3,000-foot blasts uh, 48 hours ago. We reported on a 6,000-foot blast. And now, uh, today, it's ongoing eruption, multiple events to 20,000 feet. We do have some video footage. Let me just pull that up. And here we're looking at the Krakatoa eruption, which is sending ash to 20,000 feet. Let me just blow that up for you here. And it looks like it's cycling, like it's pulsing. But something is afoot at Krakatoa, and there is the eruption to 20,000 feet. Uh, it's been increasing over the last month. So this could be getting bigger and boomier. Now, what's not getting bigger and boomier are the sunspots facing us currently right now. There are a lar large number of sunspots that are directly Earth-facing currently. And, well, the space weather is – what we're seeing is Earth-facing quiet, as you can see here. Of the x-rays going down, 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 and no more flaring. And it still looks all quiet on the western front moving forward for the next few days. Now, these sunspots are big. This is the current sunspot array on the center disk, AR2993 and 2994. But here's AR2192 from back in 2014. Much bigger, much more activity around the umbra and the penumbra there, and just a huge amount of magnetism compared to this group. So we still have a long way to go to sunspot maximum and the potential for X flares and the end of the empire. So stay tuned. Florissant, Colorado, is home to some of the biggest petrified tree stumps in the world. They're 34 million years old. And you can see one that these old timers are all sitting behind and some standing on. Massive petrified tree stump there. 34 million years old. If you're ever in the area of Florissant, go check them out. Now, scientists say there could be life on Jupiter's moon, and we may discover it soon. What? That sounds like a uh, soft disclosure to me. What say you? Comment below. Now, the Large Hadron Collider, a revamp that could revolutionize physics, is back in operation. Did you know that? It's been off for a couple years. But they're now going to waste billions of more dollars to find nothing. And that's a boom to knowledge, proper prior planning defense, piss poor performance in a dystopian world where all your tax dollars goes to Ukraine for God knows what reason, while people are starving on our streets. We 
fire back up the Large Hadron Collider where we can dump billions of dollars into a funnel for no purpose whatsoever. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be safe. My goodness, my teeth hurt. We love you. That's a boo. Mm -hmm.